Okay. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? If you can hear me, just write me down yes or not. So I understand if you... Okay. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Okay. First of all, thanks to be here today. It is a pleasure to um, uh, meet all of you. There's a lot of people that reply to our uh, participation in our project. So thank you very much. There are many different people here. Many of you uh, participate today. That's why we are recording it. So don't worry about that. And uh, very different performing artists here from poets, writers, and public officials. So thank you very much for your interest and to invest your time in our project and in yourselves, first of all. So uh, let's start with the online masterclass today. And this is an uh, uh, activity of our project. Um, it is an European project uh, funded by the Erasmus Plus program, European program, and uh, entitled Building Territorial Bridges for the Best Travel Experience and for the Benefit of Local Community. So, um, the, before to start, I'd like to uh, feel free to, to, to write down your uh, uh, questions or if you want to say something, just please write down in the group and I will uh, reply you later. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, we are five associations. The association's leader is Factory 1342, which is an Italian association. Then we have Matera Hub uh, from Italy, Viaje alla Sostenibilidad from Spain, Yacht Horizons from Greece, and I say hello to Dylan, uh, who is with us today, and Active Culture from Lithuania. Uh, let's start today with the uh, first session, uh, so the first meeting, and uh, let's give a look to the timetable and contents of this masterclass. We will have six meetings in total, so uh, we will meet uh, each Monday. Uh, today we will talk about the, um, all the actors who work uh, behind the tourism system. Uh, next Monday uh, we will talk about the phenomenon of over-tourism and sterile tourism. And then, uh, for example, the 6th of March, uh, it will be the time for the experiential tourism and who is the travel actor today. Uh, collaboration agreements between associations and public administration and site-specific performance designs on the 13th of March. On the 20th, we will talk about the value of the presentation and targeting and the value of digital uh, always in the tourism sector. And finally, we will talk about European programs as a source of growth opportunities and the main international tourism fairs in Europe. Okay, so this is our timetable and contents. But let me talk about, first of all, of what is uh, today this project. is not a project and it's not a masterclass about tourism in general. It's not a masterclass about sustainability. But uh, we will talk about these arguments because it's strictly, it's, uh, those are strictly connected with what uh, we will um, talk today. So... What we want to do is to connect all the world of performing arts with the tourism system, okay? So if you want to enter in this big mechanism and this complex mechanism, you have to have the tools and you have to know how and who is going to work today in tourism. So the motivation of our project is this one. The COVID-19 pandemic has drastically put the entire tourism and arts sector to the test, launching one of the greatest challenges ever seen as a result of the different approach to travel by tourists. The latest UNWTO World Tourism Barometer in the year 2019 indicates that international tourist arrivals in Europe were up by 3%, Despite the slowdown in the globe economy, the risk of attacks in some areas of Europe and the Middle East and the uncertainty of Brexit. Like tourism, theater and the performing arts are also fundamental sectors for their impact, not only on the economy and employment 
because they stimulate innovation, but because they contribute to generating a positive social impact also in other areas such as inclusion, urban rebirth, education, development and local economy. In recent years, there has been a revolution of the tourist traveler who places the emphasis on living unforgettable and engaging experiences. This determines a more attentive, curious and demanding attitude, which indicates how much the entertainment and training tools in a mode of the be active tourist are fundamental to satisfy the needs of consumers who are increasingly attentive and sensitive to sustainability experience and meeting with the territory. Faced with the transformation and in a constantly changing market, tourism responds with a transversal offer that focuses on the tourist experience by connecting him with the territory and local community. Sorry. Making him active in changing the development of the territory according to the principle that a fully satisfied and knowledgeable tourist can play the role of influencer and therefore contribute to the development of the, territory, of the territories visited into a qualitative return in terms of attendance. So what to do? It's necessary a severe acceleration on the consolidation between tourism and the performing arts for the purposes of the economic and cultural growth of a country. Since on the one hand, the latter can offer tourism the skills to valorize the places to visit in an alternative way and by innovating the experience of the tourist. On the other hand, the tourism can integrate modes of expression helping that interception of a new audience, diversify the sources of revenue, emerge in a market other than itself and express itself in an alternative locations to the classic stage of art galleries. This would address the requisite capacity for renewal, resilience, capacity building and pro-social behavior change. A synergistic relationship to improve the tourist offer and so that art and culture, material and immaterial together, contribute to the achievement of the smart, sustainable and inclusive growth objectives. To work in tourism, it is necessary to know the complex mechanism behind it, understanding who are the subjects who move within it and the relationship synergies that exist between them means knowing how and with whom we want to operate in order to enter that complex system defined as tourism. So do you have a new goal? Well, let's remember that in tourism, the goal of each individual operator contributes to a bigger one. Community development, environment protection, local tangible and intangible heritage. These are the objectives that are or should be in the institutional and business agenda. But above all, this is what your potential customers tend to choose today. So how to do it? Let's find out together, starting from what is tourism. According to the United Nations World or Tourism Organization, is the set of activities carried out by people who travel to countries other than the one in which they have their habitual residence outside their own environment daily for a period at, le at, at least one night, but not exceeding one year, and whose usual purpose is other than the exercise of any remunerated activity in the country or the country visited. This term includes those who travel for recreation, rest and vacation, to visit friends and relatives, for business, professional, health, religious, and more reasons. So this is what UNWTO define. There are multiple types of tourism, of course, each of which has its own time, same common characteristics and very distinct characteristics compared to the others. For example, between mountain tourism and seaside tourism, there are some aspects in common, tourism as an occasion for rest, recreation, and other practically antithetical aspects, search for cool or warm weather, different seasonality, etc. The most important classifications of tourism refer to fundamental dimensions, tourist movement and travel motivation. 
So let's start from provenance and destination, okay? So tourist movement is from the nation, in the nation, is a domestic tourism. Tourism carried out within a certain area, country or region by residents of the country itself. So let's imagine, for example, that our, our tourist is, it comes from Germany, okay? So a German people going to Germany. From the nation to abroad, we have outgoing tourism. Tourism undertaken by residents of a given country going for a rest to the another destination. So, German people going to Thailand, for example. From abroad, okay, to the nation, we have incoming tourism. So, tourism carried out by no residents inside of a given country. So, for example, a Chinese person coming to Germany. And then we have the transit tourism, which is the tourism in which a country is only crossed by tourists with a region and destination in different countries. Travel motivation can be of leisure, business, and others, for example, health, religion, study, and etc. But what is the tourist product? Let's give a look today to this one as well. So in a generic way, we can say that tourist product is the set of attractions, structures, and services of a given tourist destination. There is no single definition of a tourist product due to two variables, heterogeneity and diversification. Tourism is a basket made up of goods and services belonging to different categories. So, for example, we have accommodation, catering, transportation, and other activities, for example, cultural, sporting, recreation, all other accessory, accessory categories, for example, the shopping. Then we have another variable, which is diversification, because we have different products for different tourisms or different individuals. For example, business tourism is different from the seaside tourism. The tourism product is composed almost exclusively of services whose characteristics are intangibility, service do not have visual, gustatory, tactile, auditory or olfactory characteristics that can be verified before they are purchased before we buy it. Inseparability between the moment of delivery and the moment of use, services cannot be separated from their providers. Perishability, they cannot be stored. Let's imagine, for example, a room of a hotel. We can store it. We, if we don't sell it, we can store that room. Variability in quality. The quality of services depends on when and where they are provided. So these characteristics for million of reasons going to affect the tourist offer. But what is the tourist offer? The tourist offer is the quantity of goods and services that are, that are offered to tourists to satisfy their needs at a given time, at a given price, and in a specific place. Tourist resources are rooted in the territory. They represent the element of attraction primary, which motivates the tourist movement. As such, they must be valued, but also safeguarded. They can be natural or man-made, historic or modern, private or public, tangible or intangible, so cultural heritage. And the activities are developed around the resources to exploit and or enhance them. So, which are the characteristics of the tourist of offer? Principle, we have the rigidity, variability over time, and diversification. To transform a tourist resource offer potential into an actual tour, certain conditions are necessary for attractiveness. Basic tourist infra infrastructure, accommodation, restaurants, accessibility in terms of time and quality of transport, must be known, marketing and advertising, must correspond to a segment of demand, sport, culture, entertainment, and so on, competitiveness, competitiveness, quality, and price. 
But what is the tourist demand? In general, is the final demand expressed by all those who, having to move from their habitual residence and or from their place of work or study, for the most varied reasons, need services capable of allowing travel and staying in different places. This request for goods and services falls wool Fully or in part within the tourism sector and generate a diversified set of requests, for example, addressed to several operat operators in relation to each other. So the characteristics of the tourist demand is flexible, it is changing and variable space-time budget. Studying the tourism offer is equivalent to considering the companies that make the particular product that we define as tourism available to those who want it. Such companies in an aggregate form give light to the so-called tourism industry. But who are the actors? Tourists, enterprises providing them with goods and services, the political administrative system, which sets up a legal framework to protect the various operators and provide certain services to increase the benefit of tourists and the local community and the local population, which is involved in various ways. Tourist company that carries out production and organization activities and intermediation of travel and stays and any other form of provision of both incoming and tourist services, including the tasks of welcoming and assisting tourists, as well as the intermediation of stays within accommodation facilities with the exclusion of real estate leasing. So, Let's see now which are the most important actors of the tourism enterprises. We have three, for example, producers, distribution channels, and distributors. Before starting explaining these three actors, it's important to start using some technical terminology. I don't know if you ever about B2B or B2C, okay? So, it is a relationship between the actors of tourism system. B2B is business, business to business or buyer to buyer, refers to all the relationships that a company has with other companies, whether they are service providers or partners before reaching the final consumer. The difference from marketing to the end customer lies in the fact that we try to sell more at a lower prices. A tour operator specializing, for example, in travel orient will be able to look for customers among travel agencies that deal with that destination. B2C is business to customer or buyer to customer, the relationship between a company and final consumers. But based on the type of relationship, you focus on the setting of the products and the best strategies and methods to reach your target. For example, in the B2B products, niche products often not standardized. The products are tailored to the individual needs of the customer and involve a commitment in terms of advice and support. In the B2C relationship, these are often mass products. Customer technical knowledge. Potential customers in B2B have strong specialty knowledge. The business partner is aware of current products, prices and competitors. Intensive advice and loyalty play a very important role. In the B2C, customers usually do not have specific knowledge. Prices and offers can be compared with each other easily and in total transparency but the customer tends to not be aware of the market situation. Transaction volumes, economical, more profitable. In the B2C, we have the economic value of the transaction usually. For example, we have is, is higher. We have a higher, no? excluding, excluding luxury goods, automotive, large number of sellers. But which are who and which are the producers? 
those who provide those goods and services that tourists need during the travel and stay period. Manufacturers can be classified in relation to a few key services, hospitality supplier, the hotel and all similar accommodation facilities, land service providers, transport facilities, booking, etc., information and reception services, so guides, interpreters and entertainers, no hotel and recreational services like restaurants, shops, bars, nightclub, supplies, plus suppliers of other goods and services that complete the tourist offer, like tourist information and reception, etc. The carries, they include the companies that deal with air transport, rail transport, road transport, and water transport. What about with distribution channel? Long channel, tour operator compose tourist packages which they result to travel agencies or to the final consumer. Usually, they buy from suppliers with the empty for full formula. Middle channel, tour organizers compose tourist packages that they resell to the final consumer. These are medium and small travel agency who sell to order they buy from suppliers only after having placed the products. Short channel from producer to consumer, so B2C. And then we have no, the reservation and online platform internet. Distribution channel. B2B platforms such as global distribution system, B2C platforms such as booking.com, get your guide or aviator, reviewers and comparators, websites of the service producer, portals of local authorities. What about distribution? The distribution of a product is the set of activities that allows good or service to arrive from producer to the final consumer in tourism, this distribution takes place in different ways, directly from the supplier, airlines, railways, or from the travel agency for the ticket office, directly from travel agency for organized travel, directly from the managers, hotels, restaurants, but all through the CRS, or global distribution system or internet. What about computer reservation systems, so CRS? What is this? The CRS is a telematic network system that allows access to databases, mainly of transport company, to book tourist services. It is used since 1960 by airlines to manage the process of reserving seats on their flights initially oriented towards the solution of internal management problems of the, various air, of the various air carriers, for example, reservations and ticketing. It subsequently evolved into a powerful commercial distribution tool when the access points to the system were distributed at travel agencies. Later, hotel chains also implemented their own CRS. By spreading and competing worldwide, the CRS system have involved in global distribution system, so GDS, in order to offer tools in step with the times. What is GDS? Those are distribution systems for a global range of services, no longer limited to the airline sector, but involving other companies, organizations, and institutions. It should be noted that in daily use, the terms CRS and GDS are used synonymously, even though they have completely different configurations. The, glo the globalization of the markets, the need to know an ever increasing number of information in real time, the presence of even more advanced technologies, the ever lower costs of IT products have allowed for a further leap the World Wide Web or Internet. The orientation is to have tools available that allow tour operators to update in real time the same database valid for the site, the GDS, the call centers, and for the travel agency to be connected to the GDS or booking system online or to hotels, car rental, and companies. What about distributors? We have, for example, the main times, and we will see later as well, travel agency, 
uh, tour operators and tour organizers. What about travel agencies? Before uh, doing this differentiation, it's important to, uh, to specific the, um, the difference between the uh, terminology of incoming and outgoing, okay? And incoming and outgoing agencies. Incoming is the term indicates the movement of travelers who arrive in a region or nation for tourism and request services from local tourism businesses. Therefore, incoming agencies are located in tourist locations and offer accommodation services, visits, excursions in, the, in their higher area to incoming or receptive. Outgoing, the term refers to the movement of residents who travel outside their region or country of residence. Therefore, outgoing agencies sell to their customers trips to other national or international destinations. For example, TOs and traditional travel agencies. What about travel agency, which are retailers or retailing agencies? It carries out both incoming and outgoing travel brokerage activities. The travel agent has the task of selling services and tourist packages on behalf of the tour operators and the various suppliers, hotels, carriers, car rental, etc., offering customers the necessary support for booking and issuing the relative documentation. In order to guide the customer in choosing the necessary services and to inform them of their characteristics, the agent makes use of a plurality of tools, including catalogs and information material and IT support. In order to obtain a mandate to sell the services and have the relative support material available, the agent enters into collaboration contracts with the tour operators and the service providers. Among the travel agencies, an initial subdivision can be made based on the degree of independence and management. We have independent agencies, employee agencies owned by a group. We have associated agency, for example, networks, franchisee, consortia, and a second subdivision is given by the operational aspects. So yata agencies and no yata agencies. This is, this refer to the air transport sector, okay? For terminological simplicity, during these meetings, we will refer to reseller agencies, so we will call them travel agency in general, okay? What about tour operator? It is the company that deals with the organization and production of a trip, linking all the services together to form a single product defined as an all-inclusive trip or package tour. The individual services that make up the product are not provided by the tour operator, but by other companies, for example, the tour operator suppliers. Transport is offered by different carriers, airlines, sea, railways, bus, rental companies, accommodation and food from accommodation and catering companies and enterprises, hotels, restaurants, etc. Reception, assistance and local activity from local agencies the sale of the packages by travel agencies. It is like a big orchestra. A tour operator must have substantial financial means and considerable organizational skills to be able to contact the suppliers of individual services and obtain favorable conditions. This condition derives from the purchase of large quantities of flight seats, beds, etc allowing the tour operator to sell its packages at competitive prices compared to those that customers would be able to obtain by assembling a package with the do-it-yourself system or by purchasing the services individually. So here we have, for example, a poster okay, of a package tour and a catalog. But how do we arrive here? Programming, programming a packages means identification of geographical areas and destinations of interest, in-depth analysis of the territory, climate, political situation, health, etc. Study of the market and the offer of the tour operators on the destinations of interest, verification of the presence of adequate infrastructures, ports, airports, stations, and the relative means of connection. 
study of the accommodation potential, the type and quality of services offered to tourists, hotels, villages, restaurants, medical assistants, etc. Analysis of any other possible activities on site, visits and excursions, selection of suppliers, corresponding local agencies, careers, accommodation, processing of the necessary collaboration contracts and definition of the production costs of the package, final draft of the itinerary of the travel program with an indication of the sale price per person based on the period and type of accommodation chosen, publication of the package in its own catalog, catalog or flyer and marketing. The tour organizer. The tour organizer is a particular type of travel agency which organizes and sells trips upon request. It has offices on the road, open to the public, even if it carries out travel intermediations and production activities. It differs from the tour operator because it has no unsold risks since it works on request. In summary, Tourism is a complex system made of a multitude of companies located in the local areas and closely interconnected with an equal multitude of companies located everywhere in the world, thus in relation to the destination chosen, chosen by tourists. But is it correct to talk about territory or destination in, this, in the same way? This is not a simple question. What is tourist destination? It is the location and reference point for the facilities and services necessary to meet the needs of tourists. It is composed of a multitude of characteristics that can be contribute to the success of a dynamic co-creation process that will increase the destination's competitiveness in the tourism sector, such as the 6A system. The six A are attractions, natural, man-made, artificial, purpose-built, heritage, special events, accessibility, entire transportation system comprising routes, terminals, and vehicles, amenities, accommodation and catering facilities, retailing other tourist services, available packages, pre-arranged package by intermediaries and principals, activities, all other av available uh, in the destination, what consumer can do during their visit, and ancillary services, such as banks, post, and so on. The tourist destination is certainly a geographical place, but is also a local community and economic dynamics connected to political and social relations, natural and cultural heritage together. And above all, it is a complex of tourist products and services widespread among a multitude of small owner entre entrepreneurs. In short, the tourist destination is a complex system which today must build organized and effective forms of attracting tourist demand without losing that genius logic, which is the main reason why tourists come there and not elsewhere. Therefore, a territory becomes a destination when the market becomes aware of it, and this is translated in effective demand, also thanks to the capacity of communicate the services offered. So, we can say that the destination is a tourist product. Better, the territorial experience is seen as a tourism product. How does a territory become a destination? It could be by two processes, spontaneous or programmed. The first one, so the spontaneous one, the birth on the territory of professional activities as an effect of tourism outside of an intention strategy developed locally. For example, the first seaside destinations in the Mediterranean. The programmed progress, pro process for example, thermal destinations in the Asburg era, development of seaside destinations after the war, the Costa Brava in Spain, Black Sea coast in Romania and Bulgaria, the coast in the south of France, ski destinations in the Alps or in North America. 
The evolutionary paths that lead a territory to become a destination allow many authors to, di dis to distinguish two types of destination, the corporate one and the community one. The corporate destination, destinations in which the tourist offer is designed, managed and promoted on the market with a logic typically oriented towards marketing by a management company, which directly owns the factors of attraction, the structures and the tourist infrastructures. For example, the tourist villages and the multi-service resorts, the, th um, the third generation ski destinations and their evolutions, or for example, the theme parks. Uh, the community destination, in which multiple local are actors and the silent features are the territory as a whole is proposed on the tourist market, offering a system of natural and artificial attractions that allow the practice of different types of experiences. Resources and activities are widespread, owned by business units often predominantly local. Each business unit pursues specific goals in terms of income generation and policies and investments. The territorial public body has a decisive role in the tourist activity as it controls the landscape resources and public goods and can support the offer through the financing of activities and or the performance of direct function, establishing specific structures for the purpose. So, in this case, the involvement of local economy act actors and the recent population is important, is fundamental. Common feature of this kind of destination is that they have an economic value deriving from the enhancement of the attractions. They are perishable. It's fundamental, a policy that preserves the exhaustible economy, social and environmental resources of the destination, and they must have a systemic organization necessary to ensure quality tourism. But which are the factors affecting the choice of tourist destination? Accessibility, so transport, connection, etc. Attractions, environmental, historical, artistic, urban type, so major events, local experiences, the image that a, locally, a locality creates, the cost of living and the geopolitical situation. Okay, uh, this is, uh, mm, okay, this is the destination life cycle, okay? How a destination can grow. We have a first ex exploration of the destination until the decline or, rejuvena or rejuvenation. This is a natural process each destination leave his destination life cycle. So the first phase is, for example, this is exploration. Then we have the involvement, okay, of all the actors of the territory. Then we have the development. Then we have the consolidation. And at this point, we have our a stagnation, so the decline, or a stagnation, and a rejuvenation. So, does the need to integrate within a strategic process the actions to manage the pool factors and tourism services to interest the tourist demand and to position the destination in a competitiveness and adequate market with respect to the characteristics of the territory? This is called destination management which is a decision-making process aimed at preparing integrated offers of services and factors of attraction, which feed the tourist flow towards the destination for the achievement of a sustainable competitive ad advantage. The main activities can be identified as follows. Development of incoming traffic toward the destination, management and promotion of the image of the destination, coordination and management of relations with stakeholders, assessment of the different impacts of tourism. So the destination manager asks, him, asks, asks himself the following questions and puts the related actions into practice. What do we have? Analysis of the resources and attractions of the territory. 
who do we want? Identification and selection of target markets suitable for the destination. How can we satisfy them? Preparation of an offer development plan. How can we reach them? Development of a marketing plan. How is it possible to maintain them? Structuring of tourist reception, development of customer care actions, how to measure the results, monitoring of customer satisfaction, and so on. In short, marketing and management must constantly dialogue and be the main tools in the toolbox of this professional figure. Destination Management Organization, the DMO, the possibility for a destination community to implement the action of destination management is linked to the existence of an organizational structure that takes charge of manage the organizational and decision-making processes up to now exposed. The creation of a DMO, so a destination management organization, which carries out the action of destination management, represents a price's choice of the way in which to organize the production of services tourists in the destination. The creation of a DMO then configures itself one of the most important public interventions in the tourism administration of a territory. According to the World Tourism Organization, the destination management organization is the coordinated management of all the elements that make up a destination, attractions, access, marketing, human resources, images, and prices. It takes a strategic approach to link very different entities together for a better destination management. Destination management organizations, which could be tourism offices, convention bureau, and tourist marketing organization, are no profit organizations responsible for the management and marketing of a given destination. They can be national tourism authorities or organizations or organization at a regional or provincial level. These are public or public-private bodies that demonstrate the ability to promote, market, and manage tourist flows involving all the actors operating in, this, in the area. They carry out marketing activities through portals and websites. DMOs, therefore, not only have a leading role in the promotion and marketing of tourist destination, but are even more important in guiding the development of the destination itself. So what is important is that development, okay, but not just growth, okay? So the destination must therefore make use of a strong brand. Here you can see the uh, different brand of some destination, for example, Mexico and New York and Chile, Peru, uh, Spain, for example, is one of the um, most uh, important uh, and brand in Europe of quality we have in Europe, okay? But what about the DMC? So destination management company. Companies with a high level of knowledge and expertise in the local area and work to enhance tourism and generate incoming tourist flows. These are agencies located directly on that territory they provide hotel reservations, transport, tours, excursions, organization and events. It is not a travel agency, as the DMC, the destination management company, limits itself to a particular region or nation, enhancing and promoting its territories through targeted marketing and communication strategies. DMCs have strong contracts with local politics, but that does not necessarily have to have a public juridical form, so companies, tourist enterprises, network, etc. DMC are acquiring a central role now in the tourism sector, ensuring the quality of every aspect of the visitor's experience, managing the image and value of the destination through promotional communication processes. Welcoming the greatest number of international tourists worldwide, Europe has long been one of the most desired continent for holidaymakers. 
Considering Europe's rich abundance of history, culture, and iconic cuisines, there is no wonder that this is the case. The European Travel Awards, in fact, serves to highlight those whose work accentuates these incredible qualities and enables international tourists to experience the best that Europe has to offer. And the World Travel Award announces the 2022 winner for Europe's leading destination management company, Mid-East Travel Worldwide in Greece. So, at the end of this meeting, uh, what you have to do is to imagine the tourism system in general as a large canvas made up of a series of connections full of relationships, agreements, understanding, contracts, but above all, objectives. So don't stop right now because you have a world at your disposal. And with this, we have finished our um, first meeting today. Uh, Here we go. So I hope that everybody enjoy and, um, and that this meeting can suggest you uh, something about your job, about your work. And uh, I, will, um, I will be a really pleasure to uh, receive your uh, suggestions and uh, questions about today. And uh, see you again next Monday for uh, always at 15 p.m. on the CET time. Don't forget. And uh, um, just uh, write and don't, uh, don't leave this masterclass because we have a lot of uh, arguments to do together. I think that at the end of this, uh, of this masterclass, we will do a live session with the Zoom platform uh, just to give you, uh, if you, if you want, if some of you want, the possibility to talk together, okay, and to do a brainstorm all together, okay? So thank you very much and see you next Monday. Bye.